The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. everyone and welcome to All You Can Eat. It is the podcast about deliciousness. I'm your host Rob Rosenthal coming to you live uh, from uh, New York here in the middle of October. I'm going to say October 20 without looking. Uh, 2021 and I'm very excited about tonight's episode. Episode number 116 of All You Can Eat. And the reason for my enthusiasm is simply because I have just returned. uh, What's today? Wednesday? Four days ago maybe three, from uh, an unforgettable, uh, exotic, uh, luxurious uh, time in a very faraway place uh, called the Maldives, uh, where I had never been before, I had only heard about, and it was uh, it was phenomenal. And so on, uh, on tonight's episode of uh, All You Can Eat, I want to tell you about, uh, in general, the, the Maldives. Uh, more specifically, uh, the resort uh, in which uh, in which I stayed, an extraordinary, uh, uh, world class, uh, uh, sensational uh, place called uh, Como, Coco Island. And in fact, uh, when we get into that aspect of it, I will introduce you to uh, Vincent. What is Vincent's last name? Durier. There you go, Vincent Durier. Uh, who I spent some time with. He is the uh, manager over there at the um, Como Coco Island, and I, I think it's valuable to add his uh, perspective to my own because he lives there, because he knows, because he he's in charge of essentially the uh, happiness and satisfaction of 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 the guests over at this uh, really uh, spectacular. Uh, resort. So let's let's start at the beginning. I I think that uh, you, you know the Maldives. I, I'm I mean I don't remember when I first heard about it, and I fr- frankly up until you know a week or so ago, I'm not sure that I could have even explained <laughs> you know where where it was and 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 like w- w- why you go. I mean I kind of knew why you go because it's it's one of those places that if you've heard of is is known as a uh, incredibly beautiful. Uh, but also the kind of place that you go for a, you know, a high-end resort vacation. The Maldives, in fact, uh, consists of, I mean, it's, a, it's an independent, uh, uh, you know, country. But it consists of 1,192 islands. And, and these islands are essentially coral. Where is it? Uh, southwest of, of India and uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, east of uh, of uh, Africa, uh, right there in the in the Indian Ocean. So w- when I say you know like kind of the middle of you know the middle of nowhere, it's not the middle of nowhere. It's it's in the middle of the Indian Ocean, which is a far way away. Uh, I I mean I was there with my wife specifically because um, uh, uh, she had business in in Dubai. Now, Dubai itself, uh, coming from the United States, is going to uh, take 12 hours on a plane. And it's a fascinating, you know, city in its own right. Very modern, very, you know, a metropolis, growing, thriving, a lot of money. But but I, I we could talk about uh, Dubai, which I actually have in past podcasts another time. I'm, I'm focused here on the idea that once we knew that we were going to be over in, in Dubai, uh, my wife was smart enough to say, you know, I've never slept on one of these overwater, uh, uh, you know, villas, one of these overwater, you know, cabins. Uh, and I know that they have them. Someone had said, well, you, you know, you're close enough that you can go to the Maldives and, and do that thing. And what that entails is hopping on a plane in Dubai 
All right, so I'm, I'm going to be the first to tell you. I'm on the other side of, uh, of the world here. And uh, in Dubai, you hop on a plane for four hours. And, and then you land in, uh, in an airport in, in the Maldives. And to get from the airport uh, to uh, one of the islands, uh, in this case, uh, Cocoa Island, Cocoa, uh, we, we took a, uh, you know, a high-speed boat, like 40, you know, 45 minutes. I'm sure that you can also see plane. Uh, those seem to be the, the ways that you get to the islands. And the Maldives is fascinating uh, because, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, sensationally beautiful out there. Like the water, you know, turquoise. It's also the lowest uh, country in the world. I mean, what, what I what I mean is is specifically, it's it's five feet above sea level. You're everything there is. There's no height uh, there. You're 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 as low as it gets, and you're on coral and you're on sandbars. The temperature is basically all year long going to be plus or minus eighty degrees. And you know, oftentimes you go to these kind of lovely, uh, you know, resorts wherever they are in the world. I mean, you could be. You know, if you're United States-based, for example, you could be talking about the Caribbean. If you're on the West Coast, you could be talking about Hawaii. Uh, you know, if you're in Europe, you may be talking about any one of a, of, of a dozen places where people will say to you, oh, you know, welcome to paradise. Well, I got to say, when I heard paradise here, I looked around and I thought, this this is as true as it gets. This This is stunning out here. So there we are out in the Indian Ocean, um, 80, 82 degrees, uh, sunny, I mean, I think it's even rainy season now, but the truth of the matter is, if it rains out there, I, my experience was, it, it comes in and out pretty quickly. I, I mean, it rains for 10 minutes, and then you go, okay, let's get back to this. Part of what makes it uh, paradise is that the, um, I mean, tourism is essentially the second, you know, big business out there. The first one being kind of like the, you know, the fish and seafood business. And I'm going to say this, this, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, you've got 1,192 islands, uh, and, and, and 100 of them, or 150 of them, I don't know the exact number, uh, are, are home to, uh, you, you know, a resort, a luxury resort. So when I talk about a luxury resort, I want to put this thing into context. Uh, uh, people, you know, kind of are familiar, if you're on this side of, of the Atlantic, people know, what, what are the high-end kind of resorts? Well, you know, there's, there's Four Seasons, there's St. Regis, you know, there's these kind of things. Um, uh, you know, on the other side of the world, there are some hotel resort uh, operators, businesses, brands that you might not have heard of. And one of those is uh, is called Como. And it's a, it's, a, it's a grouping of kind of luxury hotels and, and resorts. You can look it up, comohotels.com, C-O-M-O, hotels.com. And... The Como hotels. I mean, this is serious stuff, right there. This is uh, this is the high end. This is luxury stuff. This is uh, personalized service. This is elegant properties, uh, and each one, I think, is fair to say, is is unique to the location that it's in. Now, this is not my first time at a Como resort because I had been to two of their uh, properties in um, in Bali. Indonesia. Wow. I mean, one of them was as uh, amazing, outstanding as any place that I had ever been. Uh, I just, I, I, I can't re really even do justice, but I will say that uh, uh, mountains, uh, rainforesty, I mean, your, your, your room, essentially like a, a treehouse, if you will, uh, stunning. Uh, in, incredible, incredible running water, green flowers, things you, and, and then, and then Como does it right. I, I mean, all I can say is this is like you, you check into your Como here in uh, Cocoa Island and you are assigned uh, your own butler who's going to basically look after you for as long as you are there. So this is serious stuff. And we're talking about, I think Como Group probably has 14 or 15 properties around the world. So a bunch of them are going to be Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia. There's going to be even some in, uh, you know, in Europe. Um, the ones I think in the cities are going to be more like your hotels. And then the ones in, uh, you know, and then the resorts are going to be the places you're going to find, like in Bali or here in Cocoa Island in the Maldives. And, and I will say this also about Como, that uh, they have this concept uh, called Combo, Como Shambhala. What is Shambhala? Let me take a look at exactly. Shambhala, Sanskrit. 
place of peace, tranquility, happiness. So, you know, they the Como hotels have this concept of of, of Shambhala, peace, tranquility, happiness, wellness. Uh, uh, the the food is uh, is really beautiful. It's clean. It's organic, and yet it's always delicious. Um, uh, I, I, let's put it this way: they were doing wellness before, you, you know, before wellness was a thing. And what they're known for is extraordinary, you know, kind of experiences in amazing places with, with again, with this wellness, with the cuisine, with the service. And uh, and so I, I, I we show up here uh, in Cocoa Island in the Maldives. And uh, it, it's, the, my first reaction is, wow. Um, as we're walking on a dock, to our uh, villa over water. Now, when I say over water, uh, I don't mean like on the beach. I mean you're walking on a dock to get to your room over the water. Waves. Uh, 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 you know, you can hear the just, you can hear the waves. You're you're literally on the water. Uh, not a, by the way, the Como Coco Island takes up the entire Coco Island. This is not a giant. Uh, this is not a giant place we're talking about here. You can walk from one end of Cocoa Island to the other. It might take you ten minutes, right? And so the whole thing is is the is the Como uh, uh, Cocoa Island Resort. There's one restaurant. Uh, there's one bar. Uh, there's one beautiful uh, uh, gym and a spa area. Well, I'll I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, but only thirty four of these uh, these villas. I mean, it's not a lot of people. It's got to be a ton more people working there than they have guests. And um, I, I, I mean spectacular, mesmerizing, I think is the word that I would use to describe it. And what's important for, you, you know, me, if you're going to go on one of these type of, uh, uh, I, I believe in experiences that are unforgettable. These are the best ones. These are the best ones. When you, when you go on a vacation, and and it's one that you'll never forget for whatever the reason is because of the place because of the people because of the experience because of whatever it is well uh, i have to hand it to como now twice because the place over there in um uh, in ubud uh, in in bali was was amazing and and this place m maybe even it maybe even more so uh high end uh, as i've said luxury as i've said uh, uh, relaxing. Um, uh, what are you going to do? Like, so here's the question: You get to a place like this, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and then you go, "What am I going to do?" Like, if you're the kind, I'm going to just be really blunt about this. If you're the kind of person that goes, you know, I want to go on a vacation. I need to go hiking. I, I want to do some bike riding. Uh, I want to do some kind of cultural, you know, see the, you know, you know see the museum. And ha no, you're not coming here. I'm going to tell you what what you could do here, though, uh, from your busy, type A, plugged in, stressful life. You're going to come here and unwind. You are going to come here and unplug. Now, you don't have to. I mean, the internet connection was perfectly good. You could get online anytime. You can uh, FaceTime with your kids, your friends. But I'll tell you what I did. Um, I did a lot of uh, nothing, uh, which is to say, relaxing, uh, which is to say, laying on a, you know, laying on a lounge somewhere and just listening to the wind and uh, and the sound of the waves and, you know, taking in some sun and uh, jumping into the water, uh, popping into the pool, uh, looking forward to uh, you know happy hour when the sun was going to set. Um, the, uh, the, the, the marine life here is, uh, also, um, gorgeous. So one day, um, I, I walked the requisite four minutes over to the, uh, the shack, the, the dive shack and grabbed, uh, they handed you a, you know, a snorkel and, and fins and they clean that, and then they and then they go. I go. Where do you go in? And they go right over there. And you walk for oh, I don't know, thirty seconds, and you get in the perfectly warm Indian Ocean water. And within about a half a minute, you, you're looking at uh, 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 at these fish, 
uh, a lot of them. And they are multicolored. And they, I, I felt like I was swimming in an aquarium. So one of the things you do over on this part of the world is you take advantage of the water by doing some snorkeling or what they offer is diving at every single level. So if you're a beginner, you can go. If you're like somebody that's super advanced, you can go. We uh, met a German couple, one of the other pleasures of uh, traveling around the world, and, and they, were, they, were there for, they were there for diving. He had, uh, when we went over to the dive shop, uh, the dive shop, he, he was, uh, uh, the, the husband was holding onto a camera that looked like it weighed like, I don't know, 30 pounds. Obviously, when you take that camera underwater, um, it's weightless. But I'll tell you what, um, the, my point is only that the diving over there is so serious that this guy and his wife were doing it every day. They were doing it deep. They came back with photos. They came back with um, reports of swimming with the manta rays. Uh, whose uh, who's, uh, fins uh, extended uh, nine feet uh, in width. Uh, look up, uh, if you want to see some of his photos, uh, uh, endangered.info. So you www.endangered.info. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jokenbayer uh, uh, takes uh, incredible photos in the name of uh, attempting uh, to save endangered uh, species. But my point is only that at this, you take advantage of the water both by being in it uh, at whatever level you want. Yeah, you can also go sailing, you know, and that kind of thing. And uh, there's your windsurfing thing and whatever. You can do all that kind of activity. And the other way you take advantage of the water is that you eat uh, fresh fish and seafood every day because it comes in every every single day. And then, uh, uh, and then you know, you've, you know, you've been in the water, you've done relaxing, you read a book, and now you're feeling like, I don't know, I need to unwind even a little bit more. So you go over to the super professional spa area, and you grab yourself any one of a, uh, of a number of uh, different kinds of massage. You know, the kind of basic uh, Shambhala one, which, you know, has elements of Swedish in it, and then you maybe you just want to do one of those, uh, maybe you want to do Thai massage, maybe you want to do a, a scalp massage, maybe you feel like, ooh, I need to work out some stuff here, I'm going to do some deep tissue massage, all of that is available, as is a um, uh, yoga and Pilates in a great little gym overlooking the uh, the water, of course, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and uh, what they would call a hydrotherapy pool, where a person... Uh, I don't know, it's probably like six or seven stations, various levels of intensity, water pressure that's coming out in different positions, lovely. And uh, and then you make your way over to the bar and you have a delicious cocktail, fresh juice that they make every day. Uh, then you have uh, uh, just really wonderful food. I mean, delicious. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't all have to be the kind of Shambhala uh, uh, you, you know, nutritious, more on the kind of um, uh, the, the cleaner uh, side, although it's great and delicious. I mean, they make a point of that. But I, you know, I was happy having a, uh, some of the local shrimp or lobster uh, right on a pizza. Just great. And they, they do something else, by the way. The, the, the chefs come from, like, different countries, and they allow them to, you know, to do their, their specialty, right? So... The head chef at this place, I think, was for, uh, Italian. I saw on the menu that, that they were doing a pasta uh, uh, a bolognese, but it wasn't a classic bolognese, which would be like a meat sauce. They made this one with um, with duck, right? So it's a duck uh, a bolognese, if you will, and fresh-made pasta. And it, was, um, and it was outstandingly delicious. And part of what made it special was that there was a little, what is, what is that? Oh, you know what? There was a little kind of uh, sense of uh, of orange. He uh, put uh, some orange into that uh, into that duck, which you know makes some some sense because a lot of us know you know duck from duck a la orange. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The, the, here's the thing: the food was great, great in a beautiful setting, a beautiful resort, an incredible service. I, I, everything about it is right. This is um, uh, memorable and and incredible and outstanding. And so now. Uh, without further ado, let me put on uh, the, uh, the the podcast here uh, my conversation with the manager of the place. And as I said, uh, his name was uh, Vincent. Uh, his name is uh, Vincent Durier. We had a nice chat, uh, and I want to I want you to hear what he says uh, about uh, about Como uh, here, especially in uh, in Cocoa Island. And then I'll come back afterwards to say goodnight. 
Okay, uh, as I uh, was uh, saying, I am here now to have a conversation with the uh, general manager here at the Como, Coco Island in the uh, Maldives. His name is Vincent uh, Durier. Vincent, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Rob. Very well. Thank you very much. Excellent. Um, well, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, you know taking the, the you know the time uh, to have a chat with me because um, I I'm. Uh, you know, I'm super impressed with uh, with this place, with the operation, with the, the location and everything, and I want people to understand uh, uh, more and better about where we are and what's going on here. So let's start from the very beginning. Uh, we, uh, we're in the Maldives. Yes. <laughs> Explain basically so that people have an understanding where the Maldives are in the world. So, um, yeah, the, we are in the Maldives indeed. So um, the Maldives are uh, in the uh, Indian Oceans. Uh, is actually 700 kilometers uh, in the south of Sri Lanka. Uh, so that's actually uh, in between, I will say, uh, Sri Lanka and the Seychelles, uh, just in the middle of the uh, Indian Oceans. Right, now in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and I guess the question is, so when people uh, travel here, what's the, what are the most kind of common uh, like airports of entry. I know that certainly Dubai would be one. What, what else? Where else would people fly into to, to access this part of the world? Yes, indeed. I mean, we have um, a very large international airport here in Malay, uh, right. but oh, right. of course, depends cool. where you are coming from. Right. Uh, you need some time to stop over either in the Middle East or it could be uh, um, in, in different places. If you are coming from the US, for example, it could be a stopover in Europe as well uh, because there's many direct flights as well from Europe. From so, Europe. yeah, that's very very, very easy to access to the Maldives. Uh, the international airport is large, uh, but of course uh, all the uh, island, all the resorts uh, are located um, 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 far away from Mali. Uh, so depends on where your resort are, you either have to take a boat, a speedboat, right. uh, or you have to fly on the seaplane. Yeah, okay, well so that's interesting too. So uh, yes, uh, just to repeat kind of what you said, I know that we uh, from uh, you know America uh, flew uh, originally into Dubai, and then yeah. from Dubai we took a flight uh, of some four hours into into Malé, and then from Malé uh, to your point, uh, for us it was a you know kind of a speedboat to get over here, which is like forty you know I'm going to say like forty minutes more or less. Forty minutes, yes, yeah. indeed, very comfortable. Oh, oh, easy okay. ride. <laughs> uh, easy ride, uh, no problem, all good, <laughs> and. Um, uh, I guess uh, the thing I was going to ask you though was, uh, and I really totally forgot because I sidetracked my own self, which I will do uh, periodically. So we're here in the Maldives, right, you can fly directly. And I guess, um, oh yeah, that's what you said, because I wanted to explain people like geographically the, the Maldives a little bit. You said, you know, multiple islands. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking like, the Maldives is made up of like a thousand. Uh, what, what's yeah. the what's the what's the history here? What's the story? What, what, what makes up the? Uh, is it is it an independent kind of uh, country? Like what's the situation with the Maldives? Yes, so indeed. People don't know. Yeah, no, indeed, uh, the Maldives is an independent country, uh, sure. totally independent, uh, and um, actually is like uh, one thousand different islands. It is right. And all those islands are um, um, located in different atoll. Right. Uh, so an atoll will be a group of islands, mm -hmm. uh, and then. And on each atoll, you have like, um, depends on the size of the atoll, like 50 to 100 to 200 islands. Wow. Uh, and then those islands are either um, 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 inhabited or uh, they are local islands uh -huh. or they are tourist resorts. Uh, right. So that's the situation here in the Maldives. But the country is independent. Right. Uh, and um, um, yeah, and yeah, a small, small country. Sure, Very a small, small country. country made up of a thousand different islands. Okay, yeah. one of which we are on uh, right now, which is Coco Island. Yes, and I'm just guessing from walking around here that basically the the, the Como here is the only thing that inhabits this island. Yeah, exactly. Yes, right. so, so, you, the, so the island is exclusive to the resort. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's that's always the case in the Maldives, right? Uh, either it's a local island or it's a resort island, uh, but uh, there are no uh, mixed, you know. Uh, so all the resorts are on kind of private islands, ah, if I you see, want. They all have their yes. own island. Okay. All and, are island. There, and are there many uh, uh, resorts uh, here in the Maldives? Oh, yes, it's over uh, 150 uh, resorts now. Right. Uh, most of them are on the, of course, luxury side. Are they, yeah, uh, yes, sure. luxury side. Why, why, why is that? Is it just because, uh, like, why is it mostly luxury resorts in general? 
Uh, well, because um, it's paradise here, right? Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's very beautiful. You have to pay for paradise. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that is very exclusive. Uh -huh. uh, it's also not, um, I mean, that easy to access because all those islands are far from the um, um, international airport. Sure. So I think it goes as well with your costs. If you want to take a boat ride, a speedboat, or if you want to fly with a seaplane, um, and um, all those um, islands are isolated, right? right. So uh, there's always a cost linked to um, you know bringing all the supply here to the resorts. Sure. There is also a cost with the constructions. Right. Uh, it's not like if you are in a major city where you can get right. um, everything done very easily. Right. Uh, here everything is a bit more complicated. Again, I mean, the closest city is Colombo, uh, which is like 700 kilometers by uh, plane, right? right. So um, 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 all the cost of freight and the cost of bringing all the materials and everything sure. here in the Maldives uh, right. make it like an expensive destination. Yeah, totally, totally understood. And I guess the question then is, when we talk about it being paradise, right? So. Like, I, I mean, it's the middle of October at this point. I yes. kind of, I'll be honest with you, Vincent, I, I have lost track of the day. And the That's very good. <laughs> but what I do recall is that it was somewhere in the middle, towards the middle of yeah. October. And I'm going to say basically, you know, I'm going to say in my, in my uh, uh, numbers, uh, about 88 degrees, sunny, I mean, beautiful. I suppose it could be 90, it could be 86. But at this point in the year, uh, I mean, it's, it's warm weather. Uh, and 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 the, and the water uh, here, the, I, I assume the Indian Ocean. I don't mean you know what, my people are not very good at geography, <clears throat> but the water here is the same uh, temperature as the air. I mean, you get into that water, you're walking into warm. Yes, uh, you yeah. know it's a beautiful uh, uh, thing. So <clears throat> and luxury resorts. So why do people come? Uh, so two questions for you. Why do people come to the Maldives uh, in general? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> besides like luxury and beauty, that may be enough of an answer. And then beyond that, like when's the, you know, like what's the season? Like when is the time to come? So I think that why the people are coming here is um, very simple. I think that, um, as you say, the weather is always fantastic, uh, even if we have a small uh, so-called raining season. Right. But <coughs> it, it, won't, it won't rain for the whole day. It might be an hour every day. Sure. And, and then that's... Um, um, De it really depends and varies, uh, but uh, weather is once and um, um, luxury, beautiful resorts. Uh, the sea is beautiful. Uh, yeah. You have all those uh, different shades of blue. Uh, the marine life is uh, very much um, 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 fantastic here. You can see pretty much everything uh, uh, from the ray, from the sharks, um, uh, all sorts of fishes. Um, uh, so that's um, very beautiful corals as well. Uh, so that's very much uh, preserved and, and beautiful here. Uh, one thing as well that is very, very important, uh, the kindness of the people. Uh -huh. uh, we are um, um, in that uh, region of uh, Indian Oceans uh, where uh, people have um, very, very um, much um, hospitable, uh, very, very, very kind, uh, and they uh, know how to take care, and they really have like a true um, authentic hospitality, uh, which is very much uh, difficult to find uh, those days. Um, and they, they do those things like um, naturally. They're very, very genuine. And I think that is what uh, people uh, are looking at, uh, this kind of very much uh, true uh, relationship, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so um, this is what we get here in the Maldives. So uh, that's why I guess people are coming here. Right, yeah, I mean, that pretty much does answer the question. It's gorgeous, <laughs> um, the weather is beautiful, uh, you, you are, uh, the, the people are naturally warm and hospitable, and uh, the, the marine life, as you said, is, uh, is astounding. And, and, and here's the truth. Uh, I mean, I will we'll get to talk a little bit of now uh, about Cocoa Island, per se, and about Como, because I walked out of my little, uh, uh, you probably have a, a name for what these uh, huts are, these little, what, what are you? The villa, yeah. Uh, villa, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, which is situated r right on top of the uh, of the ocean. I mean, yes. I'm on. You know, I wake up to the sound of waves crashing into into yeah. the into the shore. Uh, I mean, it's stunning. But yesterday, I walked out of my uh, little villa here, and I see uh, sharks uh, floating around in the uh, uh, in in my backyard, in my yeah. neighborhood, in water, uh, by the way, that I can uh, access instantly right from my own little uh, room because there are stairs that lead right down into the into the ocean. 
So I, I guess I, I say this uh, not only because I was uh, afraid, and then I was told, don't worry, those sharks <laughs> have no interest in me. Those are not like great white sharks. No. Those are babies that don't want to have any contact with me. But also, you, you know, part of what's uh, amazing here, I suppose, is that people go snorkeling and diving because what you have here in terms of marine life is amazing, yeah? Well, yes, I mean, especially here in the Komokokoa Islands, mm -hmm. um, because of our location, we are we have like 20 um, of most of the uh, famous um, dive sites in the Maldives and probably in the world. Nice. And and the good thing is that you have uh, for you, you have a bit of everything for different level, uh, from beginner to experts. Everyone can find some things. So we have some things very very technical, something very challenging but we also have some things very easy uh, depends on, on of course you know your abilities to to dive so that's really nice and as you say um, all our villa are located uh, on the water uh, and uh, with uh, direct access to the lagoon uh, the good things about cocoa is that our lagoon is very shallow uh, so you know you can uh, just walk on the water uh, uh, for a few meters before you get to the deep water sure. and uh, you can actually snorkel directly from your villa you don't have to get into a boat right. uh, you don't have to go for a excursion right you right. can just anytime anytime you want uh, pick your uh, snorkeling equipment and just jump on the sea and just look at the beautiful marine lives and that's really a gift yeah and, and just <clears throat> this is not a question uh, this is a question for me now this is like a selfish question but when you say you can walk like if I get my I, I come over here you provide the, the snorkeling equipment and then I walk kind of the lagoon obviously you're not really snorkeling in the lagoon because it's a little shallow right yes. you would walk to where the water gets a little bit uh, darker blue and deeper and that's where you would snorkel, yes. right? Okay, God, I just wanted to make you, sure. You have, you have of, of course, a lot of things happening in the lagoon itself, sure. right? As, as you say, yeah, you have seen sharks, sharks yes, and exactly. everything, but of course, most of the most of the things that you can see are uh, on this, uh, if you want, border between the lagoon and then the deep oceans, uh, where you will have all those corals, and right. we have your, what we call the reef, right. and there, from there, you can see like an amazing um, um, a variety of marine life, so that's beautiful. Yeah, so I mean, it's really an amazing place to show up for anybody that's interested in either uh, snorkeling or diving at any level, from learning it to uh, definitely. doing it at a high level. Definitely. Yeah. Well, no. This place. So let's let's just be clear so that people understand what we're talking about. This place here, this Como Coco Island, is amazing. I mean, I've been fortunate, hmm. uh, Vincent, in my lifetime to have been uh, uh, around the world, including, uh, by the way, another Como uh, resort or two, actually on the island on the island of, uh, of Bali. Yeah. Uh, that were. Uh, that were astonishing, and I, <clears throat> I, I I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not su surprised, mind you. I, uh, I just think that it's important for people to understand that when it comes to kind of like high-end luxury resorts, one of the names that they want to have in their mind now is Como. So even before we talk about uh, Coco Island per se, which obviously we're going to get to, tell the folks about about Como, about Como hotels, about what makes it, uh, uh, what makes it uh, outstanding. Uh Como is um, it's a small um, small brand. Uh, we have um, 15 hotels at the moment. Right. Uh, they're all in um, superb locations. Yes. Uh, and um, all the hotels are somehow different. Uh, of course, all the hotels have the same uh, DNA. Um, and uh, with a focus on design, a focus on wellness. Yes. Uh, and, um, but uh, they're all very much boutique, uh, different. So you have resorts. Uh, in, for example, Bhutan, uh, Thailand, uh, Bali, uh, here in the Maldives, but you also have city hotels. Uh, we have uh, property in London, uh, we have uh, property um, in uh, Perth, Australia, we have properties in, um, in Bangkok as well. So you have both city hotels um, uh, and, and resorts uh, with a high focus on, on cuisine as well. Yes. Uh, cuisine is very, very important to us. Uh, we have our own uh, spa brands uh, that we call Como Chambre. Mm -hmm. uh, with um, a lot of um, experts uh, in providing treatments yeah. uh, and all sorts of uh, wellness activities uh, from uh, yoga, pilates, uh, uh, fitness, uh, and and exactly, yes. Yeah. So um, even here at the hotel we have a hydrotherapy pool, yeah. which was the first hydrotherapy pool in the Maldives, which sure. is absolutely nice and, and beautiful and you can just spend time there and, and relax and then uh, the water pressure will do the walks. <laughs> I, I want to tell you something um, because you. I'm glad that you, you you raised it. I went over yesterday. Yeah. 
and I went into the water therapy pool, which is a building that is so beautiful that just the photograph alone would have been okay for me. But I, uh, I, walk, I, I, I went around the, the circuit of the hydrotherapy pool where, uh, uh, you know, the water pressure, as you said, does the work. And, and, That's it. and, and, I, and I saved, of course, the, those, those two, the, the fire hoses, kind of, I would call them. Yeah. I saved those at the end because the, the, the pressure on those was enough that I was making noise from, the, you, you know, the happy noise from the release of pressure on my back and shoulders from the, from the, from the water that, were, that shot out of, out of those things like a cannon. And I guess what was funny for me was uh, uh, that when I got up out of the, the pool, I could see that, that, my, that I could see that I shot water all over the place. Like yeah. literally it went from my back to all over the place. That was the intensity of the pressure. And then I, uh, and then I, I laid down and I was, I was exhausted from that. I mean, it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, Como, sh Shambhala, uh, is that a, a, a word that has meaning in some uh, like Sanskrit or something? Is there, a, is there something to Shambhala? Yeah, that's a badiness uh, Balance. word, yes, exactly. And so. what does it uh, kind of stand for? It's just something kind of like, it must mean like wellness or yeah. pleasure or something a along those lines. Absolutely, yes, yeah, in, uh, exactly. in badiness language. Yeah, I just wanted to know because it is a proprietary kind of usage of the word for coma. Yeah, and, 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 and I can now t uh, attest to what it is that you're saying, having been here and, and, in, and in Bali as well, that there's not only an aesthetic uh, kind of uh, beauty uh, to the uh, resorts, uh, to, to the location, but there also is a focus on kind of that, I suppose I would call it, this is not you speaking, but my, that kind of whole mind-body uh, uh, balance in, in the sense that you are here to uh, relax yes. uh, and to yeah. breathe and to, uh, and to eat. We, well, uh, I mean, that the Shambhala uh, menu, cause I would definitely have to talk about the food, obviously I'm yeah. a food guy, but the Shambhala menu is very impressive mm. because you're using, um, just a, a healthy, natural, organic, uh, local mm. uh, ingredients mm. for the most part, and, and they're being transformed into extraordinarily delicious uh, uh, cuisine. No, absolutely, yeah. And this is what this is what uh, Como has been uh, doing for years, and this is very interesting now that you know many brands because of uh, the recent. Um, 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 Covid crisis are kind of jumping into wellness and sure. those kind of things. But uh, as Como, uh, we have been like doing that for years, and this is really part of our DNA, and this is really what we are doing. And um, um, for the spa, for the treatments, uh, for the food as well, you just touched on on the Como Chambala cuisine, sure. and um, um, we have actually a lot of uh, recipes um, um, that, as you say, uh, are all very healthy uh, and what is um, excellent with Como Shambhala is that uh, it's only healthy things but is no compromise on the taste yes. and, and sometimes is what you can you can see with um, so-called healthy cuisine it can yeah. be a bit boring yes. it can be a bit tasteless yes. but uh, for us it's like well no it should not have any compromise on on, on the pleasure of eating right. uh, eating um, um, is very important a social moment uh, you spend with your friends uh, with your family and, and you really need to enjoy this moment uh, but uh, it can be done on a healthy way uh, so this is what we try to do with the Como Shambhala cuisine and uh, those recipes uh, are available uh, uh, in every single of our properties. So of course there are some uh, classic or signature dishes that you can find uh, everywhere. Right. Uh, but uh, that's really nice and, and also that's uh, international cuisine. So you will have like some very much uh, Western dishes I will say, but you also have a lot of uh, Asian dishes um, 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 with Asian influences uh, using a lot of um, 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 uh, herbs and a lot of uh, spices as well. Yep. Uh, so that's really, really interesting. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm glad that we're talking about it now because it reminds me that um, I've so far in the short time that I've been here uh, made a point of trying uh, 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 as many different kind of little tastes of things that I could. So for example, I, I had some lovely uh, biryani uh, uh, yes. last night. Uh, and I've tried a, kind of a, um, I'm trying to think of what it was. I had a, some, like this morning, for example, I tried some of the, what you would call, uh, what they call here the rice porridge. Yes, uh, uh, the rice. kanji. It's kanji. It's yes. definitely uh. a, a kanji. Uh, and, 
and I had, as well this morning, speaking of delicious and healthy, I had, I think, the best juice that I've ever had. Yeah. And today's juice, because it changes. Like, it changes every day. I, I mean, it's very <laughs> impressive, Vincent, to be honest with you. What I asked for, I was, I'm always thinking one meal ahead. So at lunch, I had said to the, 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 the waiter, uh, can I take a look at tonight's dinner menu? And he said, you could, but it's not ready yet. Because it changes yes. every day. Yeah. And so uh, today's juice was... I, I think it had some uh, 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 beet and some and some carrot and some yep. celery and maybe some parsley and something else, probably apple. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was fantastic. Uh, uh, the, all the food. I had a sweet. I had a shrimp uh, a pizza uh, the first night. Fantastic. So I've had multicultural cuisine, yeah. and and uh, you you guys are doing great, uh, great uh, stuff. Is there food? Because uh, again, it has to. Be, I'm assuming, unless you grow things here, it has to be imported. Talk a bit about how where the food comes from. So, so yeah, I mean, as, as you say, it's, it's not much um, things uh, in the in the Maldives uh, in terms of. Uh, um, um, things that you can find because they're all like very small uh, islands. Uh, the soil is basically sands everywhere and it's very hot so it's not easy to grow things but uh, uh, we have to bring things uh, from Southeast Asia mainly. Yep. Um, depends on the uh, products but uh, you were talking about the juices and indeed they are we have those Como Shambhala juices as well that yes. changes every day mm -hmm. uh, and every uh, juice uh, somehow will have uh, different benefits on your health uh, so which is also explained to you but again I mean they are healthy juices but they must taste good there's no point on giving something healthy if it tastes not nice and we, if it's we agree the, at the end of the day this is yeah. all about pleasure and then uh, you were talking uh, about like that multicultural cuisine sure. uh, what is good about uh, our hotel but is the same thing across uh, the whole resort in Como you have a very international cuisine team right. so for example my executive chef is from Italy uh -huh. uh, so he will look after all that western cuisine but then we have executive sous chef uh, from Indonesia right. uh, and then we have chef from Thailand right. so if you ask a pad thai here it will be cooked by someone who has been cooking pad thai for uh, his whole life who Fantastic. knows exactly the authenticity and then of course I have Indian chef and I have chef from Sri Lanka right. and so on so that's why if you want the food is you have we have so much variety we have so much uh, influences and that's why we can keep the food authentic uh, otherwise you know it's only a copy right. and then it cannot be done properly so this is really some things that and then again if for example let's say that I have Thai dishes on the menu and my Thai chef is going for holidays mm -hmm. then we will remove the dish from the menu yeah, it's right. not someone else who is going to try to do it and it's just not available right. and I love when this when you ask for the dinner menu and the team say well is not ready yet this is really what's happened because we look at what we have right. and uh, here being by the sea we have like daily um, 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 we, we buy the, the fish daily so we, we cannot order fish uh, the fishermen just show up here and just show the catch of the day and right. then usually we have uh, agreements and we take most of it uh, if it cannot be uh, used at the um, um, restaurant for the guests we will use it at the team restaurant but we, we take the daily catch and then this becomes our menu uh, and then the, the, the team has to scratch their heads and be creatives and sure. then write the menu uh, so that's make it also very interesting for the guests because we we really know, don't know what to find on the menu except the Como Shambhala dishes sure. Como Shambhala is a constant right. but then all the other dishes will be a dish of the day <laughs> uh, I have to say it's incredibly impressive uh, I mean it just is it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful food it's beautifully prepared it's fresh and most importantly to your point it's delicious I mean that, that is the trick that uh, whether you decide to go kind of Shambhala, which will be keeping it relatively yeah. on the clean side, or, uh, you know, or in my case, I'm having a pizza. Uh, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever it may be, the, in either case, it's, uh, it's very impressive. But, but the whole resort here, and it's not big. I mean, what, what are they, like 39 uh, kind of units? We have 34, 34, 34 villas, yes. 34 villas, okay. And each one of them, uh, so that people understand, I want to try to draw yeah. a picture, is, is situated on, like on all, all on the water oh the, like when we say on the water folks I'm not talking about like on the beach where you can get out of no. the room and walk into the sand when you walk out of your room you're either on a, a on a dock uh, or you can walk right from your room into into the lagoon so you are literally on the water and you yeah. hear uh, uh, while you're there the waves constantly yeah. uh, you, you know constantly moving into you can hear the waves so that's that's also something I mean 
in, in many resorts on the, on the Maldives, you have uh, overwater villa, as we call them. But here, and usually you have a mix between overwater and beach villa. Right. But here we have overwater only. only. But what is, 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 is interesting, what you say as well, because in this resort, um, our villa have a donny shape. Uh, the donny is the local boat, uh, is the local the Maldivian design. boat. Uh -huh. So uh, the design of the villa um, are really much designed on the donny style uh, from the outside, but you are also from the inside. You might feel that you are on a boat and you are on a boat which is also underwater. Right. So that's the whole story uh, that, of course, the guests love. And, you know, that's why it's so easy to disconnect here and it's so easy to feel in paradise because you're coming from, uh, you know, most of the guests are living in huge cities and things like that and living on buildings or, and so on. And then coming here, certainly you are on the water on that um, uh, boat, um, um, boat designed uh, villa and they can, yeah, really like, you know, disconnect. Uh, I want to get right to that, uh, but I just want to, before I forget, mention that there is something incredible about... Uh, you're up early, uh, seeing the sun uh, rising in the morning, yeah. and 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 how the everything is situated, and you know at happy hour time you watch as the sun uh, yeah. sets. I'm, I'm always there for that. Yeah. Both, both <laughs> of the, course, both the happy hour and the sun. <laughs> yeah, of course. Sunset. But I, I, I think uh, the other thing that I wanted to say because you just mentioned it. Oh, was the unplugging? I mean, like, so here's the thing. The, the internet reception here is perfectly excellent. Uh, yeah. I have had no issue with it, and yet. Uh, you, you mentioned the word disconnecting. Thank you for that, because he, this is exactly where you want to be when you uh, have been busy and you have been stressed and, and, and you are tired and you need to get away. This is kind of the definition of unplugging here. You're, you, you, you don't have to get dressed up. You don't even have to put on uh, shoes. Uh, and you certainly don't have to connect if you don't want to. I found myself uh, uh, spending an entire day yesterday, Vincent, doing exactly one thing, nothing. I mean, I literally walked from a hydrotherapy pool to the deck uh, of my own uh, little uh, uh, villa there and just listened to the waves crash. And yeah. I, I didn't even discover that I had a Bluetooth speaker in my room until mm. this morning, so I haven't had any, any kind of distraction. It's really it's outstanding. Okay. Um, uh, and, and decides, oh, I met, uh, for example, here, you know, you do, uh, it's part of the beauty of, of travel is that you meet other uh, people. Yes. So we have gotten friendly with a couple here that's from uh, uh, the UK, a German couple, and they're big divers, and um, what was the point that I was going to make about this? Can, oh, yeah, she had actually said that she has, now, as a doctor, the German uh, mm -hmm. woman, you know, she's had a very intense two years. Mm. Right? I mean, it's been tough for everybody, but if you're a doctor no, yeah, during but COVID, so, yeah. and, and where does she come? She comes here. Mm. But she came here. And I said, how, you know, like, how long are you staying? Oh, oh. One month. <laughs> you said, we mm. we for 30 days. And I said, well, mm. that's something she said, oh, no, you need to understand. They have a special, you know, kind of a extended stay program. Yeah. You want to describe that? Yeah. I mean, by that's the way, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is one thing. Yeah. I realize I have to take a, so you a, see, or, I have to take a PCR test yeah. uh, to go back. There's a part of me that's like, well, if I were ever going to be, you know, uh, uh, quarantined, uh, put me here. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, Robert, if you want to extend your stay, by the way, you ju just let me know. That's, uh, uh, you know, always an opportunity. But, uh, yeah, we have that 30-night uh, stay right. uh, with um, um, a very good uh, deal as well. Uh, but... Um, I have to say that um, during this COVID time, uh, yeah. we can see that the length of stay is, is yeah is growing. It's a little uh, bit longer. Yeah, exactly. I think that now is more around like ten days sure. uh, on average. Right. Uh, some people will stay a month. Some people will stay two months. We had wow. people who came here to uh, write book as well. So they just um, wanted to be able to be on a very quiet um, environment amazing. and uh, just to. Uh, um, um, you know, get some inspirations from the sea and get some, uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and being able to be here. So, uh, so um, yeah, a month is possible, two months is possible, six months is possible. This is entirely up to you. Uh, but well, I, I, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the four day program, yeah. so I, I, I mean, but even so, and mm -hmm. I am uh, sadly in, uh, in anticipation of my departure, but even so, I, I mean, if, if when you have four days, uh, in the middle of uh, basically a beautiful nowhere, 
uh, with not a lot to do other than maybe watch the sun and uh, and get a massage, uh, uh, you know, treatment uh, here and there, and you know, go out fishing or snorkeling, whatever. Four days is also uh, good. I mean, when I come. You know, the next time I'll, I'll, I'll make it longer. It's just that I've been away for a while. But, but, so, but that's very interesting as well because um, I get a lot of people who um, have been telling me um, on the first day um, because it was not, you know, during this time as well, not many options to travel. So at the end of the day, they decided to come here and they were a bit afraid to get bored. And, and Maldives was, it was the first time for them. But at the end of the stay, they will tell you like, wow, time really flew here. And, and, and we have been here for 10 days. And it's like if we arrived yesterday. And actually, there's not much to do. Yeah. Uh, that's very uh, quiet. But this, we, we kind of forget because the pace we are living now in the in modern world is so fast that when we are able to reconnect you know, with the nature, reconnect with the sea, and reconnect with the sea simple things of life, actually the time fly so fast and we're enjoying so much and as you say the best things to do here is to wake up early, wake up with the sunrise, take a walk on the sand bank we have and just like watch the, the beauty of the sunrise, it's so simple and then end the day with the sand down with a beautiful cocktail and not, you know, don't get to bed too late so you can wake up early on the next day and and it's just like so nice and you cannot get bored and i never heard a guest to tell me oh you know uh, it's nice here but there's no things to do now you always find some things to do and you always have like also the best things to do is not to do anything <laughs> well I, I think that that uh i think that that's kind of the the the, the contradiction and, and that i think is valuable for people to understand i i'm gonna guess that most of the guests uh that you have here at the resort uh, are people that um, you know have been in um, uh, high, high stress uh, kind high of stress occupations stress. And, uh, and and need an opportunity to uh, you know to escape and to relax and so I think it's hard this is a type A personality generally that I'm referring to I think it's hard is for those people to to you know shut it down and turn it off and whatever but there's really nothing m more valuable than that, than, than to kind of have some time to do nothing and yeah. do it for yourself. And if you want to do that, I mean, I can't, I can't think of a more glorious, uh, uh, beautiful, uh, relaxing uh, place uh, to do it than here, where the weather is uh, ideal, where the water is uh, beautiful, the surroundings are lush, uh, the food is uh, delicious, the hospitality is... Uh, is, is excellent, and I, I'll tell you what, uh, in, unless, uh, Vincent, there's something else that you think that we should add, I'm going to tell you something that I, I, I always remember from, um, uh, the, the Jerry Garcia said, and I paraphrase this from The Grateful Dead, he said, it's not enough to be the best at what you do, but to be the only one who does mm -hmm. what you do. And, and so, I, I mentioned that in the context of, you know, Como is a very kind of high-end boutique luxury resort uh, uh, operation, and yet I, I still find it unique. Mm -hmm. I still find it unique. I find it different because of, of you know, the kind of thing that you want yeah. to hear. I mean, I mean that, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I cannot agree more. And, and again, it's not, I, I try to be a bit objective here, sure. even if, of course, I am uh, in love with this place, sure. uh, which uh, you can understand uh, yes, now, sure. but yes. uh, if I am uh, very objective, and um, um, there are hundreds of resorts in the Maldives, and you have top brands, and you have very, very beautiful things. Uh, but um, what's happened in this hotel is that um, um, it has been a Como hotel for 20 years. Wow. Uh, it was already a uh, hotel before. And um, this gets some things that is so unique and so different and that you cannot find on the new build hotel. Yeah. We have people here who have been working here and you met most of them, right. been working here for 25 years, 20 years, 15 years. Yeah. All those people really kind of somehow own the hotel, uh, not financially, but they own the hotel with their heart. Uh, so they welcome the guests as the guests are their family. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of repeaters, uh, people coming like every year or sometimes twice a year, wow. they, will have, uh, they will ask to be assigned to a particular butler because the butler will be part of the family. Oh, wow. uh, there are some people that, you know, they keep in touch, you know, um, uh, during the years. So what you can find here in Cocoa, uh, 
you are not able to find anywhere else in the Maldives. This resort is so special once again. Well, and, yeah. and, and that's very, and also by the size, uh, is only 400 meters long. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's also uh, bring even more to the uniqueness of the, the property. Well, we, uh, we certainly, uh, we both agree on that. Unique <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, uh, and one of a kind and, uh, and extraordinary. Uh, and thank you uh, for uh, not only what you do here, but thanks for taking the time to, uh, you know, to meet with me and, uh, and, and, making, uh, you know, and making it come to life a little bit for, uh, you know, for, the, for our audience. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Robert, yeah. Thank right. you. Well, my friends, uh, there you go. I, I guess the, the way I would sum it up is by saying this. You know, if you're lucky in your life, uh, and I have been, you uh, you know you get to see and and uh, and go different uh, places. Uh, they don't have to be far away because you know there's incredible places within minutes or miles or hours of uh, of where we all live. But in this case, uh, I am happy to report to you uh, from uh, a place that. Uh, that's on the other side of the world, and 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 I get that. Uh, look, uh, you know, uh, n not everybody will have the opportunity to get uh, to get that far. But here's what I I would like to say: that is that if in your uh, lifetime uh, you have uh, both the uh, the time, the opportunity, the wherewithal, uh, and the desire to go somewhere uh, that's unforgettable, that's, uh, that's spectacular, that's beautiful, uh, where the objective would be to not necessarily do a, a ton of, uh, of, of different things, but uh, really to kind of like settle in and breathe and relax and eat well and, uh, you know, get into that water uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, kind of like reconnect with yourself, your your partner, your spouse, whatever it is, if you have the time to get away and do that thing, well, uh, certainly the Maldives are one place to do that. And uh, and certainly, uh, and unquestionably, it's uh, really easy for me to uh, recommend uh, Como there in, uh, in Cocoa Island. That is it for uh, this evening's uh, uh, program, episode 116 of All You Can Eat. Uh, as you know, the podcast is about deliciousness. I'm here with you generally every week. Uh, you can hear the podcast on the largest uh, platforms uh, in the world that include, of course, iHeartRadio and uh, Spotify. I'll be back with you uh, next week with more uh, deliciousness. If you need to uh, find me, remember Real Rob Rosenthal because realrobrosenthal.com will get you to me. And then if you wanted to contact me with any questions, you certainly could. Real Rob Rosenthal, uh, I suppose you can also find me on Instagram if you want to see basically what I've been eating and cooking. And uh, I will uh, look forward to the next time we get together. And until then, remember this, my friends, life is short, so never waste a meal. I'm the Teflon Pan Man. I'm the Teflon Pan Man. Ain't nothing gonna stick on.